Hey everyone, welcome to the online program of Amrita IAS Academy. My name is Sibi Joy and as part of our monthly current affairs MCQ series, this is part 3A of August 2020. So without any delay, we'll go into the questions. Question number 1. Consider the following statements. India ranks first in terms of areas under organic farming. 2. Sikkim became the first state in the world to become fully organic. 3. Mission Organic Value Chain Development for Northeast Region or MOVCD and Paramparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana or PKVY were launched to encourage chemical free farming. Select the correct answer using the given below code. Option A 1 and 2 only, Option B 1 only, Option C 2 and 3 only and Option D 3 only. So looking at this, th this is something that has been the current affair for the past few months or even for the past over one year that Sikkim became the first state in the world to become fully organic. So if somebody know somebody who has been learning about the you know learning the current affairs or looking at the newspapers for the past few month cycles, we would know that the second statement is absolutely right. The second statement is right, we are left with just two options, option A1 and 2 only and option C2 and 3 only. So now we need to know whether the statement 1 or statement 3 is right. Either one of them is right or the, and the other one is wrong. So the first statement, India ranks first in terms of area under organic farming. Let's keep it in doubt. But the third statement, MOVCD and PKVY were launched to encourage chemical free farming. So we'll be learning about the various government schemes as part of our current affairs and also while preparing for the uh, UPSC civil services examination. We did learn that PKVY and MOVCD were launched to encourage chemical free farming. So knowing that I can say the third statement is right. So automatically the first statement becomes wrong and I would go with the option C2 and 3 only. So even if we are not completely aware about a certain program or certain topic, just knowing a few points about it can help us eliminate major statements and reach the right answer. So I'll go with option C2 and 3 only. Let's look at the explanation. The answer is C. Statement 1 is not correct because India ranks first in number of organic farmers and ninth in terms of area and organic farming. The second statement is correct because Sikkim became the first state in the world to become fully organic and other states including Tripura and Uttarakhand have set similar targets. Statement 3 is correct because of the aim of assisting farmers to adopt organic farming and improve remunerations due to premium prices, two dedicated programs namely Mission Organic Value Chain Development for Northeast Region MOVCD and the Paraparagat Krishi Vikas Yojana or PKVY were launched in 2015 to encourage chemical free farming. So that is the explanation for this question. We will go for the next question. Consider the following statements. One, the fifth schedule consists of provisions for the administration of tri tribal areas in Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. Two, the governors of these states are empowered to reorganize boundaries of the tribal areas. Three, the sixth schedule provides provisions for setting up a separate autonomous district and regional council. Which of the above mentioned statements are correct? Option A, 1 and 2 only, option B, 2 and 3 only, option C, 1 and 3 only, and option D, all of the above. So looking at this, I would say, we will be learning about the various schedules of the constitution while learning about polity for the UPSC civil services examination. In that, you will learn that which states, uh, under fifth schedule, which all states come and under sixth schedule, which all states comes. So in the first statement, the fifth schedule consists of provisions for the administration of, administration of tribal areas in Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram is absolutely wrong because it is not the fifth schedule, but it's the sixth schedule. So this is a very common part of the static uh, portion of the polity syllabus. So this is something any basic aspirant who is preparing would know. Even if you are not aware of it, you will be learning it or take this opportunity to learn about it. So if you remove the first statement, you are left with just one option, option B, 2 and 3 only. That is, the governors of these states are empowered to reorganize boundaries of the tribal areas. Yes, the governors are empowered. And the sixth schedule does provide provisions for setting up separate autonomous district and regional council. So I'll go with option B, 2 and 3 only. Let's look at the explanation. The answer is B. Statement 1 is not correct because the sixth schedule consists of provisions for the administration of tribal areas in Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. According to Article 244 of the Indian Constitution, the sixth, the sixth schedule currently includes 10 autonomous district councils in four northeastern states that are Assam, Meghalaya, Mizoram and Tripura. Whereas, the fifth schedule covers notified districts or parts that are of, of in 10 states that is Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Odisha, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Madhya Pradesh. The second statement, the governors of these states are empowered to reorganize boundaries of the tribal areas. In simpler terms, she or he can choose to include or exclude any area, increase or decrease the boundaries and unite two or more autonomous districts into one. They can also alter or change the names of autonomous regions without a separate legislation. The third statement is also right because the sixth schedule seeks to safeguard the rights of the tribal population through the formation of autonomous district councils, ADZ, bodies representing a district to which the constitution has given various de varying degrees of autonomy within the state legislature. Along with the ADCs, the sixth schedule also provides for separate regional councils for each area constituted as an autonomous region. So that is the explanation with regards to the sixth schedule and the various tribal areas which come under it. I hope you all understood this. We will go for the next question.
consider the following statements about hornbills. One, they play essential role in forest ecosystems as dispersers of seeds of forest plants. Two, habitat loss, hunting and loss of large trees that they need for feeding and nesting is posing a threat to their survival. Three, in India, hornbills are found only in northeastern states. Which of the above mentioned statements are correct? Option A, 1 and 2 only, option B, 1 only, option C, 2 and 3 only and option D, 3 only. So, looking at this, let us take the third statement because it has the absolute keyword that only is present. In India, hornbills are found only in northeastern states. Taking such a keyword seems to be a bit problematic because we know that there are many hornbills are present across all across India, not specifically in the northeastern states alone. So, I can say the third statement is wrong. Let us remove the third statement. We are left with just two options, option A and B, that is 1 and 2 only and 1 only. Automatically, the statement 1 becomes right. Let us look at the second statement. Habitat loss, hunting and loss of large trees that they need for feeding and nesting is posing a threat to their survival. Yes, uh, hornbills are facing loss due to habitat, hunting and even the trees in which they habit and nest is being cut down. So, I would say the second statement is also true in this context and I would go with the option A, 1 and 2 only. Let us look at the explanation. The answer is A, statement 1 is correct because hornbills play essential roles in forest ecosystems as dispersers of seeds of forest plant. The statement 2 is correct because hornbills are today threatened by habitat loss, hunting and loss of large trees that they need for feeding and nesting. Statement 3 is not correct because India has 9 hornbill species of which 4 are found in the western guards. Indian grey hornbill, the Malabar grey hornbill, the Malabar pied hornbill and the widely distributed but endangered great hornbill. India also has one species that has one of the smallest strains of any hornbill, the Narcondam hornbill which is found only on the island of Narcondam. So try to remember which are the major hornbills that are found in India and where they are being distributed. And with that, I hope you all understood this question. We will go for the next question. In context of the Central Information Commission or CIC, consider the following statements. 1. It is a constitutional body. 2. The Chief Information Commissioner holds office for a term of 5 years from the date on which he enters upon his office and is eligible for reappointment. Choose the correct code. Option A, 1 only. Option B, 2 only. Option C, both 1 and 2. And option D, neither 1 nor 2. So, while learning about the various bodies which are, constitu which are constitutional, statutory and quasi-judicial, we will be learning about what kind of bodies they are and what function they provide. So, we know which are the bodies which are being con which are constitutional and which are not constitutional. The Central Information Commission is not a constitutional body but rather it is a statutory body which comes under the Right to Information Act. So, since it is being activated by a statute, I would say that the first statement is wrong and we can remove option A, 1 only and option C, both 1 and 2. So, now we are left with option B, 2 only and option D neither 1 nor 2. Looking at the second statement, the Chief Information Commissioner holds office for a term of 5 years from the date on which he enters upon his office and is eligible for reappointment. No, the Chief Information Commissioner is not eligible for reappointment. That is the actual rule which is present in the RTA Act. So, knowing that, I can say the second statement is also wrong and I would go with option D, neither 1 nor 2. We will be learning about the RTA Act and all its uh, allied uh, institutions and organizations while preparing for the civil services examination as part of the polity syllabus. So, we do not have to worry even if you are not aware about it. Please look at the explanation. You will be able to understand about it. Let us go for the explanation. The answer is D. Statement 1 is not correct because the Central Information Commission has been constituted with effect from 12-10-2005 under the Right to Information Act of 2005. Thus, it is a statutory body. The jurisdiction of the Commission extends over all central public authorities. The statement 2 is not correct because Section 13 of the RTA Act of 2005 provides that the Chief Information Commissioner shall hold office for a term of 5 years from the date on which he enters upon his office and shall not be eligible for reappointment. So, that is the explanation for this question and these are the terms and the ma ma uh, major changes that have been brought about from the RTA Act of 2005, the RTA Rules of 2009 which has reduced the uh, hold office terms from 5 years to 3 years and also the change, change in salary and uh, I hope you all understood this question. Please note the two changes that uh, while the RTA Act states for 5 years, the RTA Rules have been brought brought down the tenure from 5 years to 3 years. So, that is the explanation for this question. We will go for the next question. <coughs> With reference to Indian defense system, what is Sartak sometimes seen in news? A. Torpedo launcher, B. Offshore patrol vessel, C. Bulletproof vehicle and D. Electric submarine. So, Sartak is something that has been there in the news. We will be learning about the major defense systems of India and since it is also an ABC type of question, it is a bit hard for us to know it, but if you are aware about the news which has been happening around us recently and we are aware of it consistently, we will know that Sartak is actually an offshore petrol vessel of the Indian Coast Guard. So, I will go with option B, offshore petrol vessel. Let us look at the explanation. The answer is B, an offshore petrol vessel OPV for the Indian Coast Guard was launched and rechristened as Indian Coast Guard ship Sartak 
OPV Sartak is the fourth in the series of five OPVs. It has been designed and built indigenously by the Messiahs of Goa Shipyard Limited GSL in line with the Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi's vision of Make in India. The ship is fitted with the state-of-art navigation, communication equipment, sensor and machinery. The 105 meter ship displaces approximately 2350 tons and is propelled by two 9100 kilowatt diesel engines designed to attain a maximum speed of 26 knots with an endurance of 6000 nautical miles. The sustenance and reach coupled with the latest equipment and system provides her the capability to perform the role of a command platform and undertake tasks to fulfill the Coast Guard Charter. The ship is designed to embark and carry a twin-engine helicopter, four high-speed boats and one inflatable boat for swift boarding and search and rescue operations. The ship is also capable of carrying limited pollution response equipment to undertake oil spill pollution response at sea. So I hope you all understood about Sartak and what is its role and what is its features. We will go for the next question. Consider the following statements about the Indian national flag. One, Pingali Venkaya was the designer of the flag on which the Indian national flag is based. Two, the Ashok Chakra with 24 spokes in national flag intended to show peace and truth. Three, the Congress Working Committee adopted the tricolor as a national flag in 1931 Karachi session. Select the correct answer using the given below code. Option A, 1 and 2 only. Option B, 2 only. Option C, 1 and 3 only. And option D, 3 only. So, uh, let's take the second statement. The Ashok Chakra with the 24 spokes in national flag intended to show peace and truth. No, it is not meant to show peace and truth, but rather its function is to, shown towards we need to grow continuously and uh, the rolling motion of the chakra means we need to grow continuously and not stagnate as a nation. So, I would say the second statement is wrong in this context. We will be learning about the major things. So, if you remove the second statement, you are left with just option C, 1 and 3 only and option D, 3 only. Automatically, the third statement becomes right in the first statement. Pingali Venkaya was the designer of the Indian flag on which the uh, which the which was adopted by the uh, country later on. So I'd say the first and the third statements are right in this context. We'll be learning about them as part of our history. So I'd go with option C, one and three only. Let's look at the explanation. The answer is C. Statement one is correct because Pingali Venkaya was an Indian freedom fighter and the designer of the flag on which the Indian national flag was based. Statement two is not correct because the tricolor was altered to become the flag of independent India. Saffron on top symbolizes strength and courage. White in the middle represents peace and truth and the green at the bottom stands for fertility, growth and auspiciousness, auspiciousness of the land. The Ashok Chakra with the 24 spokes replaced the spinning wheel as an emblem of the, on the flag. It is intended to show that there is life in movement and death in stagnation. So that is the idea behind each of the colors. Statement 3 is correct because the Congress committee met in Karachi and adopted the tricolor as a national flag in 1931. So that is the explanation for this question. Hope you all understood about the major features of our Indian national flag. We will go for the next question. The organic matter present in soil helps to 1. Decrease water holding capacity 2. Improve soil fertility 3. Prevent soil erosion Which of the above mentioned statements are correct? Option A 1 and 2 only, Option B 2 and 3 only, Option C 1 and 3 only and Option D all of the above. So while learning about the basic soil, we will be learning about that as for part of our geography and also somewhat, uh, some more, somewhat or some smaller parts of it in environment too. So, one major role which is played by the organic matter which is present in the soil is it actually increases the water holding capacity of the soil. So, the first statement whereas it says decreases water holding capacity. So, I'd say the first statement is wrong. Let's remove the first statement. We are left with just option B, 2 and 3 only. That is if we, uh, that is improve soil fertility and prevent soil erosion. And both of them seem to be right in this context. So, I'd confidently go with option B, 2 and 3 only. We'll be learning about them. Don't worry. So, let's go for the explanation. The answer is B. Organic matter is the very foundation of good soil health. It consists of plants, animal material which gets converted into humus after decomposing. Organic matter can even improve the fertility of sandy soils. It supplies nutrients, increases water holding capacity, prevents soil erosion and supplication of organic matter into the soil decreases with the frequent tilling of the land. Thus, statement 2 and 3 are correct and the statement 1 is wrong because in addition to providing nutrients and habitat to organisms living in the soil, uh, organic matter also binds soil uh, particles pa particles into aggregates and improves the water holding capacity. So that is the explanation for this question. I hope you all understood what are the major features of having organic content in the soil. We will go for the next question. Consider the following statements. 1. In accordance with the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934, RBA has to transfer its surplus to the central government. 2. The currency and gold revaluation account, the contingency fund and the asset development fund all together make RBA reserves. Three. The Bimal Jalan panel had recommended transfer of surplus reserves to the government. Which of the above mentioned statements are correct? Option A, 1 and 2 only. Option B, 1 only. Option C, 2 and 3 only. And option D, 1, 2 and 3 only. So, this has been there uh, recently in the news consistently with regards to what is 
uh, what is the reserves held by RBI and all of that and we will also be learning about the major uh, role and the function of RBI while preparing for economy too. So, I would say the first statement in accordance with the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934, RBI has to transfer its surplus to the government, central government is absolutely right. The third statement that the Bimal Jalan panel, panel had recommended transfer of surplus reserves to the government is also right because that was also there in the news consistently. So, since statement 1 and 3 are both right and we will be learning about the major accounts or the funds which are maintained by the RBI, the currency and gold revaluation account, the contingency fund and the asset development fund altogether make RBI reserves is also true in this context. I would go with the option, option D 1, 2 and 3 only. Let us look at the explanation. The answer is D. Statement 1 is correct because in accordance with section 47 allocation of surplus profits of the Reserve Bank <coughs> of the Reserve Bank of India Act of 1934, the central bank has to transfer the surplus that is the excess of income over expenditure to the government. After making provision for bad and doubtful debts, depreciation in assets, contribution to staff and superannuation fund and for all other matters for which provision is to be made by or under this act or which are usually provided for by bankers, the balance of the profit shall be paid to the central government. The statement 2 is correct because the central bank has three different funds that together comprise its reserves. They are the currency and gold revaluation account or the CGRA, the contingency fund CF and the asset development fund ADF. Of these, the CGRA is by far the largest and makes up the significant bulk of the RBA's reserves. The third statement, the Bimal Jalan panel that was considered by the RBA in December under former RBA governor Bimal Jalan to review the economic capital framework of the RBA has recommended transfer of surplus reserves to the government in tranches over 3 to 5 years. So, that is the explanation for this question with regards to RBA. I hope you all understood this. We will go for the next question. In context of the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team or the CERT in, consider the following statements. 1. It is India's Cyber Security Watchdog. 2. It is an office within the Ministry of Home Affairs. 3. It issues guidelines, advisories, vulnerability notes and white papers relating to information and reporting of cyber incidents. Choose the correct code option A 1 and 2 only, option B 2 only, option C 1 and 3 only and option D 3 only. So, looking at this I would say that we will be uh, the Indian Cy Computer Emergency Response Team or certain is not an office within the Ministry of Home Affairs, but rather it is within the Ministry of uh, and uh, METI or the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So, I would say the second statement to be wrong in this context. Remove the second statement, we are left with option C and D that is option C 1 and 3 only and option D 3 only. So, now we know the third statement is right. We need to look at the first statement that is India Cyber Security Watchdog. Yes, certain is India Cyber Security Watchdog and I would say the 1 and 3 are both right in this context. I would go with option C 1 and 3 only. Let us look at the explanation. The answer is C. Statement 1 is correct because certain is India Cyber Security Watchdog. The statement 2 is not correct because the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team certain is an office within the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology of the Government of India and it is the nodal agency to deal with cyber security threats like hacking and phishing. The third statement is correct because it issues guidelines, advisories, vulnerability notes and white papers relating to information security practices, procedures, prevention, response and reporting of cyber incidents. So, that is the explanation for this question with regards to certain. I hope you all understood this. We will go for the next question. What is the Arab Peace Initiative sometimes seen in news? A. Peace agreement that will prevent Afghanistan from once again becoming a haven for international terrorism. B. Agreement to end this conflict between Israelis and Palestinians brokered by Saudi Arabia. C. Proposal for an end to the Arab-Israeli conflict and D. Proposal to resolve issues between Iran and Arab. So, the Arab Peace Initiative is free, seen in use frequently and mainly it is a proposal for an end to the Arab-Israeli conflict. So, in this case, it is an ABC type of question. It is a bit difficult to know but the Arab Peace Initiative is something which is very important as part of our international relations and we will be learning about it. So, in this case, if you can make a logic or if you can find a logical uh, uh, logical uh, statement which you can link to this answer, it would be great. In case you are not able to find, do not worry even if you are not aware about it, this is an opportunity to learn about this. Let us go for option C, proposal for an end to the Arab-Israeli conflict. Let us look at the explanation. The answer is C, the Arab Peace Initiative also known as the Saudi Initiative is a 10 sentence proposal for an end to the Arab-Israeli conflict that was endorsed with the Arab League in 2002 at the Beirut summit and re endorsed at the 2000 and at the 2017 Arab League summits. The initiative calls for normalizing relations between the Arab world and Israel in exchange for a full withdrawal by Israel from the occupied territories that is including the West Bank, Gaza, the Golan Heights and Lebanon. A just settlement of the Palestinian refugee problem based on UN resolution of 194 and the establishment of a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. So, that is the explanation for the Arab peace initiative also known as the Saudi initiative and it is a major proposal to end the conflict between Iran uh, between Israel 
and the Arab world. I hope you all understood this. We will go for the next question. Which of the following are correctly matched? New Year festival and the associated religious community. 1. Navroz, Parsi. 2. Sanken, Hindu. 3. Lozar, Buddhist. Select the correct answer using the given below code. Option A 1 and 2 only, option B 3 only, option C 1 and 3 only and option D 2 only. So looking at this, I would say that the Navros belongs to the Parsi community, whereas the Losar belongs to the Buddhist community and the Sanken does not belong to the Hindu community, but rather it also belongs to the specific sect of Buddhism known as the Theravada Buddhism, but it is not belong, does not belong to the Hindu community. So I would say I would go with the option C 1 and 3 only. So we will be learning about the major festivals as part of our art and culture. We will be covering them or even if you are not aware of it, do not worry, you can learn about this as part of our current affairs series and it should definitely help you for the uh, prelims, uh, upcoming prelims examination. So in this case, I would go with option C, 1 and 3 only. Let us look at the explanation. The answer is C. Statement 1 is correct because Parsi New Year also known as Navros is celebrated by the Parsi and the Irani community to usher in the beginning of the new year. The statement 2 is not correct because the Sankhan festival is celebrated in Arunachal Pradesh and parts of Assam, India as the traditional New Year's Day from 13th to 15th April by the Theravada Buddhist communities. It coincides with the new year of many calendars. The Sankhan festival is celebrated by the people of the Kamti tribe. The festival is also celebrated by Singpo, Thai Kamyang, Tangsa and of Arunachal Pradesh and Thai Fakir, Thai Aton and Thai Turung communities of Assam. The main attraction of the festival is splashing clean water which is the symbol of peace and purity. The third statement, Losar is a festival in Tibetan Buddhism. The holiday is celebrated on various dates depending upon the location that is Tibet, Bhutan, Nepal and India tradition. The holiday is a New Year's festival celebrated on the first day of the Luni Solar Tibetan calendar which corresponds to a date in February or March in the Gregorian calendar. So that is the explanation for the major festival and the associated religious community with it. So I hope you all understood this. We will go for the next question. Consider the following statements. 1. Fly ash is the byproduct of pulverized coal combustion in thermal power plants. 2. Andhra Pradesh is the first Indian state that adopted a fly ash utilization policy. 3. Fly ash can be utilized for production of bricks, soil conditioning and construction of roads. Which of the above mentioned statements are correct? Option A 1 and 2 only, Option B 2 and 3 only, Option C 1 and 3 only and Option D all of the above. So looking at this, I would say fly ash is the byproduct of pulverized coal combustion in thermal power plant. But the second statement, Andhra Pradesh is the first Indian state that adopted a fly ash utilization policy is wrong. It is rather Maharashtra which was the first Indian state that adopted a fly ash utilization policy. So let us remove the second statement. We are left with just one option, option C 1 and 3 only. The third statement is fly ash can be utilized for production of bricks, soil conditioning and construction of roads. Yes, that is true. So statement 1 and 3 are right in this context. I would go with option C 1 and 3 only. So this has been there in the news consistently with regards to the fly ash. Let us look at the explanation. The answer is C. Statement 1 is correct because fly ash is the byproduct of pulverized coal combustion in the thermal power plant. These are very light particles and they become airborne. Statement 2 is not correct because Maharashtra becomes the first Indian state to adopt fly ash utilization policy. A step towards using environment friendly materials for construction has been taken. Statement 3 is correct because the fly ash can be utilized for the construction of road, production of bricks and other construction material and soil conditioning for improving its quality which should help in increasing the crop yield. So that is the explanation for this question with regards to fly ash utilization policy and Maharashtra which is the first state to implement it. So with this we are ending this video. This is CB Joy signing off. I hope you all have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah.